Our scripture today comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. I thank my God every time I remember you, and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Welcome to our Reflection on Sunday for November the 9th. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis, and it's a blessing as we continue our conversation reflecting on All Saints Day. And today, as we continue this theme of paying it forward that we started in our sermon this past Sunday, as we continue this theme of hearing the voices of our past inspire us to do great things, today I want to take a huge chance. That I, I have decided not to pick out specific words. Because one of the things I want to, to share with you, and I'm going to walk on a tightrope with no safety net to do this, we never can be fully aware of where the next blessing is going to come from. We constantly have to have our ears open to hear the words of guidance that could come out of anywhere. Being inspired by God to touch our souls, to push us forward to do great and wonderful things. Today, I'm going to use two books, and I've done this before. This one is 100 Voices. Words that shaped our souls and wisdom to guide our future. 100 quotes in here. Also, I'm going to use this other book. We've used this before. The, the, uh, the words, uh, The World According to Mr. Rogers. And I'm just going to read random quotes and talk to, about them for a moment. Because, once again, not having any picked out that I want to share with you intentionally... But I want to use this as an example, that we have to constantly be focused on the places that we are going to receive a blessing, and they may come in unexpected ways, through unexpected words, through unexpected guidance. And every time that we thank the Lord our God for the saints in our lives, as our scripture today shares, we realize that there was a time, once upon a time, that our saints in our lives were complete strangers. But they came along in an unexpected moment, in an unexpected way, and touched our souls. So let's, let's, let's walk on that tightrope today with no safety net and, and move into some places of unexpected blessings as I open a random page and I look at the uh, words of Reinhold Niebuhr. And as we share this prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Reinhold Niebuhr. Let's look at some blessings that can come from this unexpected reading today. As we talk about what it means to live life one day at a time, as we, as we hear the serenity prayer within this of God grant me the acceptance to, to accept the things I cannot change and the courage the things to change the things that I can. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. 
I think for me individually, one of the hardest things that I deal with is um, being unpleased <laughs> when things aren't going my way. I want to stamp my feet and bang on the table and shout and scream when things aren't going to the blueprint that I have laid out in my life. I think about what it means when I become so frustrated and upset that things aren't going the way that I want them to go that I may miss the reality that things are going exactly the way that God wants them to. I think about this challenge that that we shared on Sunday morning about the reality of what it means to be aware of the blessings that exist in our lives because sometimes the blessing in our lives aren't always visible in the moment. I think about all of the places that I've gotten to within my being. From graduating high school to graduating college, finding the girl of my dreams, to graduating seminary, to being ordained as a United Methodist pastor, I have all these key point moments that I can celebrate as blessings, but those major key point moments of blessings, excuse me, excuse me, are fueled by smaller blessings that came along the way that kept me going to get to the key point. Every major blessings is walking through the flower fields of smaller blessings. And if we take it day by day, not being so fixated on the one key point that becomes the major celebration that we can scream and shout about out loud, the major moment, but it's the 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 flower fields of blessings. It's the yellow brick road to getting to the Emerald City that the smaller blessings take place that transform us. You know, I just I just grabbed at that narrative, but I think that the narrative that exists within the Wizard of Oz really fits in with what I just read with Reinhold Niebuhr. If we look at Dorothy and the Tin Man and the Lion and the Scarecrow, and they're trying to get to the Emerald City to get the major b blessing of courage and wisdom and a heart and to go home again. It's the journey that gets them to the Emerald City that prepares their hearts the most for the blessing that they've been striving for. And it's the journey to the Emerald City that prepares their hearts the most of realizing that the blessing that they want to receive doesn't quite look like the ones that they were expecting. It's the smaller moments and the smaller journey that gets them there, that blesses their hearts and helps them to truly be aware that the lion always had courage. The tin man always had a heart, and the scarecrow always had a brain. And there is always a way to go back home again. Let's do another one. We may skip the Mr. Rogers book. This one is from the 1970s, and this one is going to come from Mother Teresa. Let us not be satisfied with just giving money. Money is not enough. Money can be got, but they need your hearts to love them. So spread love everywhere you go. First of all, in your own home. Give love to your children, to your wife or your husband, to your next door neighbor. I want to read that again. That's very, very beautiful. Let us not be satisfied to just give money. Money is not enough. Money can be got. But they need your hearts to love them. Go spread love everywhere you go. First of all, in your own home, give love to your children, to your wife or your husband, and to your next door neighbor, our support systems. And to be a part of a support system, again, just like the narrative that I used of the Wizard of Oz, it's the journey that makes the difference. It's the journey on the yellow brick road of living that shows us who we really are. And it's the journey that we're willing to go on with others 
that helps us see who we are and that we are loved. Looking at this, this reading from Mother Teresa, it's the willingness to love our support system, our at-home support system, to love our kids, to love our spouses, to love our neighbors, the ones who are constantly around us that we display love to. It's my blessing, much like in our prayer, our sermon from Sunday, that they pay it forward or sometimes pay it back and return that love to us in some hard times. I, I think about the moments that I've needed forgiveness and, more importantly, moments that I have needed to forgive myself for mistakes that I've made. And when I think about this, I think about the places that individuals are willing to immediately uh, forgive us because they've been on the journey with this. They know our true selves, and they know who that we truly are. When we make a mistake and step on a toe or, or trip over someone's already broken feet and make the injuries a little bit deeper unintentionally, it's the journey that we've already been on with these individuals that enables them to see who we truly are and to be able to immediately forgive us for mistakes that we've already made because they know us for who we really are and they, they know that those mistakes do not define who we are but who we are transcends the mistakes that we've made. It's the journey of Dorothy, the, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the, the Lion that they work together in this, in this prayer of Mother Teresa. That's the family. That's the mom and the dad and the kids. That's the neighbors walking side by side. And as they go through this journey, they are able to support each other and finding the real blessings in the Emerald City. Not finding a, a functioning organ of a heart, but realizing that they have a heart because their hearts breaking, realizing that they had courage because they went on this journey with their community and realizing that they had brains all along because they made a decisions for the team that helped them reach the goal of the Emerald City. The more we show love to our support system, the more that we interact and spend time with our support systems, the more that we see who we truly are, the more that we see who our friends truly are. And when we meet, re reach moments of mistakes and hardships and some bad, nasty things, we remember who they really are because we've been on the journey with them. And instead of holding against them a mistake, we can look at who they really are and celebrate a moment of forgiveness. Now, I'm going to add an extra challenge to this. I'm going to see if I can keep the narrative of, of the Wizard of Oz going through this thing. All right. I got to figure out where this one starts. Oswald Chambers. The things that Jesus did were of the most menial and commonplace order. And this is an indication that it takes all God's power in me to do the most commonplace things in his way. All the ordinary sordid things of our lives reveal more quickly than anything what we are made of. You do not know what you are going to do. The only thing you know is that God knows what he's doing. It is the attitude, it is this attitude that keeps you in perpetual wonder. You do not know what God is going to do next. I'm going to try to read that again. There were some words that exceeded my dyslexia. 
I want to try to read this one more time. The things that Jesus did were of the most menial and commonplace order. And this is an indication that it takes all God's power in me to do the most commonplace things in his way. All the ordinary sordid things of our lives reveal more quickly than anything what we are made of. You do not know what you are going to do. The only thing you know is that God knows what he's going to do. It is the attitude, it is this attitude that keeps you in perpetual wonder. You do not know what God is going to do next. It's very beautiful setting aside our expectations and not following our own set conclusions to get to the places that we want to go. We know we have a road map. We know that we have a shepherd who is leading us along the way. We know that at times when we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death or to continue on my challenge of keeping this Wizard of Oz theme going through this as we get to the poppy feeds, uh, poppy seed fields that are going to put us to sleep at times. We know that we have the shepherd. We know we have a yellow brick road that is guiding us to where we need to be, whether that place is the place that we wanted to get to. And I want us to think about that. Once upon a time within my life, I was inspired to continue my process of education and go to school to study music. I was inspired by, as I shared in our sermon on Sunday morning, inspired by my high school choir teacher, Jim McGinnis, roots that go all the way back from picking up a saxophone for the first time with Charles Butler and moving into the high school band with Bob McMillan and moving into choir with Jim McGinnis. This, this whole lineage of having music in my life in different and varying ways leading me to a point that I felt inspired that not only could I go to school frustrated with my educational limitations, but I could go to the school and I could thrive in school. And I had this focused image of being a music teacher just like Charles Butler, just like Bob McMillan, just like Jim McGinnis, and touch some kid's life to show them their potential so that they could go out and do great things. Now, here's the deal, and this is how this fits in with, with the reading I just did. Sometimes that place leads us to a place that we didn't expect to go. We, God knows what God is doing. And we may not know. And we may see the path that we want to follow, but we need to be willing to end up to where God is truly taking us to be. Because in this day and age, even though for the last two years... Through these video presentations, I have once again been using music through preparing the music for these videos. Through preparing the music of what has been our worship services through our time of COVID separation, along with the assistance and the, and the blessed, blessed guidance of our music leader, Jen Nalwan. But... I'm here as a pastor and not as a music teacher because we don't know where the yellow brick road's going to go. We just need to make sure we don't stop in the poppy seed fields because it's, we think it's where we need to stay. We don't get to the true blessings when we reach the places that we want to reach because God has so much more in place for us and God has much deeper expectations of us than our own limit, limited ideas of who we are. God sees the whole person, and God wants to lead us to the place. And again, tying back into my challenge of carrying the narrative of the Wizard of Oz through this, 
at the beginning of our journey, we don't see our courage, we don't see our heart, and we don't see our wisdom. And we don't see the way to get home. But the tools of those things existed. And we go on some wonderful journeys with God to learn how to use our tools so that we can see that they were there all along. Okay, one more, one more. I already opened that page. One more. This one is a poem by G.K. Chester, Chester, Chesterton. G.K. Chesterton. And this is a poem. O God of earth and altar, bow down and hear our cry. Our earthly rulers falter. Our people drift and die. The walls of gold entomb us. The swords of scorn divide. Take not thy thunder from us, but take away our pride. Wow. One more time. Because I messed up Mr. Chesterton's name, I want to read his poem twice. How beautiful. O God of earth, earth and altar, bow down and hear our cry. Our earthly rulers falter. Our people drift and die. The walls of gold and tumus, the swords of scorn divide. Take not thy thunder from us, but take away our pride. Let's go ahead and look at that last line of that poem. Take away our pride. It's pride that makes it that the lion can't see his courage. It's pride, and it's the pride of, of feeling limited, even our regrets. Pride limits us, and pride can limit us to only seeing our faults at times. It's the pride of feeling less than that causes the scarecrow not to see his wisdom. It's the pride of feeling like a shell of a human being that makes the tin man not realize that he has a heart. And it's the fear within pride of being separated from our home that wants us to get back home so quickly that we forget to go on the journey to get there so that we can see and learn what the God that already knows what will be as our last reading can teach us who that we are going to be. I want us to set aside our expectations. I want us to set aside our own desires so that God can show us our true potentials and take us to the places that God wants us to be and to show us the hearts of love we've always had to show us the wisdom that exists in our hearts of faith, the courage that exists in us because of the actions that Jesus Christ has always done so that we can see the home that God has prepared for us to be included and loved for who we are. Did it. No safety net. Unexpected blessings and an unexpected carry-through narrative of one of Metro Golden Mayor's greatest movies. Look for the unexpected blessings in your lives and in those daily prayers, ask God to show you things you're not looking for. That was our reflection on Sunday for November the 9th. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.